I hear the props burst into life, standing on the tarmac in Aberdeen, Heliport. The noise envelops my senses as I wait my turn in the 5.30 a.m. queue. My bags and I are both weighed. I hand my passport and flight with Bosiet to a smiling, weary face who processes me and asks me certain questions. My survival checks are done. I walk past the drug checks to collect my bags, then stroll out into the breaking dawn. Off to Shetlands it is then. We laugh and joke about our first class tickets to the shortest runway I know. Off to Bristow and Skatsta, where hope and dreams live and die on a daily basis. The fixed wind takes off and we fly north. The skies darken again. Just at the thought of those black cliffs with salt spray and hushed wave crashing over them. The prop's drone eases as we come in for landing. It has been announced. We all await the thud of the wheels and a marvellous meal deal ticket. I am flight number seven. On board to the Taciturn, I have a four hour daydream ahead of me in this mighty hangar. No plush seats here, just coloured stretched woven nylon to ease the strain on our pupils awaiting the North Sea. The clock tick tocks in my mind, 40 minutes to flight. I can almost smell the burnt diesel of the engine wafting over the tarmac to meet me. My survival suit and whirly bird awaits to transport me out. We get the call to suit up, dragging on a yellow and black cuffed encapsulated survival entity. The, the seals are tight around my wrist and neck. I can feel my veins pumping through. It gives me a certain comfort. I know it will work if things were to go south. The light on the door changes to red. We take a, a flight brief from the crew <clears throat> and sign the paperwork. The light changes green. Good to go. I step out onto the tarmac. Ruffled grey, white billowed clouds meet my gaze and rain patters my face. Changing my suit from yellow to orange. Yellow is a colour more visible in dark oceans. Burnt fuel meets my nostrils and the rotors of the S-92 invade my earplugged senses. Thud, thud, thud. We place our bags at the edge and a handler places them in the back hold. Our 18 seats await with three point harnesses and pop out windows and doors if the need arises. Today, my placement is first entrance. I plan my escape and am asked by the co-pilot if I know the routine to pop the main door. I nod. The pre-flights are done and we arise to the skies. As we do, I catch my first glimpse of a dark ocean with seahorses dancing, the crest of waves towards us. We have lifted to a thousand feet and sweep over the last green beds of land, over the craggy peaks, into the North Sea. The constant thud of the rotor drones me into a hypnotic state 
and I drift with my thoughts like dark clouds. A strange noise erupts from the cockpit. I open my eyes and see the dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree and a pilot intercom bursts into life. We are losing power, mayday, mayday, mayday. We are returning to base, emergency landing required, clear aerospace. I remember my training. I look to see my fear in other men's eyes. We have all contemplated the moment of brace, brace, brace. It never comes. The pilot guides us back in under half power to dance our way off and back into the hangar. Our bags are unloaded and we get our meal deal. We now get to hang around all day until the last flight out to suit up again with a great story for the lads on deck.